everybody. Welcome back. This is episode 60 of the Ruby Moss Cottage Yurtcast. We are living life high up in the Great Smoky Mountains in a yurt. Surrounded by clouds, you can see from this vantage point, you can't tell, but it's a beautiful morning. I'm having my cuppa, and you see the lipstick on it. Yes, in the mountains, you still wear lipstick. Even when there's no one around to see it. I have no, my hair is not fixed. I have no other makeup on, but I have lipstick. See, no makeup, hair's a mess. Tapa. I've even spilt some on me. You can see right there, but I'm out here all alone and it is gorgeous. It's gorgeous. So I thought I'd bring you along. This is my turning point. I'm heading back up the mountain now. It's a beautiful day. It's a beautiful day. It's a beautiful day. The weather is turning just a tad bit cooler. And I've been out on walks and hikes, hiking the trails. On this particular hike, I hiked up. There were several waterfalls, but this is one of my favorites. And I never have been up here alone. So this day I hiked down or hiked up. And then I walked down to this beautiful waterfall. And I had it all to myself. Usually, it's all crowded and two groups are coming down the falls. But today, I'm all alone. Awesome. Oh, my God. 
I was also fortunate enough to go to West Virginia, visit family, and take some walks up there with my sister-in-law. So you have to watch, because I'll put it in. Oh, I wasn't videoing. <laughs> oh, that's crazy. Okay. okay. <laughs> it's in the bucket. Take two. <laughs> Welcome back to our yurt. I hope you all have been well. It's a little rainy today. I don't know if you can hear, it's just starting to sprinkle. So I'm hoping that I can beat the rain. Um, if it stays like this, it won't be distracting, but if it becomes a downpour, then I'll have to pause and finish later because it will drown out everything I say. For those of you who follow along, welcome back. To the new ones, welcome. I live in a yurt high up in the Great Smoky Mountains, and that's what I'm talking about, the rain. Because when it rains on the roof, you hear it. And it would just about, if it's hard, it drowns out all talking. So I am I love a good rainy day. So I'm hoping by the time I get finished recording that it absolutely is a downpour and it's thundering and lightning and I'll just cuddle in with a good book maybe do some editing and um but that's why I'm going to try and beat the rain. I hope you've got your cuppa. I have mine. This is from my friend Marta in London and I am drinking Downton Abbey tea in it today. And you can see the steam. It's hot. Um so that's what's in my cuppa and I'm going to set it here so I hope you have something that you enjoy as well. Hmm, what have I been doing lately? Let's see. Well, the weather up here is getting a little bit cooler. So that's always a welcome sight for this winter hearted girl. And um, I'm just hanging out at the yurt, doing what you do. I am knitting. I have a new finished object here that I'm wearing. We'll talk about that in a little bit. I have been reading. Um, I have been doing a little online shopping. I went and visited family, so I've got some fabric to show you. It has just been a good couple of weeks since we talked last. So I went to West Virginia. That's where I was born and raised. That's where my husband was born and raised. And so I went up there. He had to go away uh, to travel for some work. So I thought I'm gonna go up there and visit his family, my family and I had the best time I played. I stayed with his brother and his wife and um, ah, it was so relaxing. We ate a lot of good food. We had a lot of laughs. My mother-in-law, my sister-in-law and I went to the movies. We saw Mac and Rita, very, very cute. I love Diane Keaton. Um, so that was, I, I just love, I thought it was really an adorable movie. And then my mother-in-law she gave me some uh, fabric. She took me down to her basement and she uh, let me pick through fabric. She thought that I had said I wanted to make a Christmas quilt. Now, there is some debate. She swears up and down I said I wanted to make a Christmas quilt and I don't remember ever saying I wanted to make a Christmas quilt. So, I'm not saying she's wrong because I very well could be. I I could have said it in, in the heat of the moment and just forgot that I said it. She had all of her Christmas fabrics separated out. So I went, was able to go through some of those that I wanted. I'm gonna show you the stack. I took a video and some photos, but now it's all washed and it's all ironed. She gave me this big stack of fabric, such beautiful fabrics. I am in love with those. So, yes, there is a lot of Christmas fabric. A lot of the Christmas fabric is vintage looking. I am planning to make a Christmas quilt now. And I was really um, kind of dumbfounded because I was like, what am I going to do? Excuse me while I plop that down there. What am I going to do? I, I, didn't, I didn't have the thought process in mind for a Christmas quilt. 
And then um, if you follow Lowland Originals, um, what is her name? I know your name. Lowland Originals, what is your name? Renee. If you follow Renee of Lowland Originals, you've seen her quilts that are just like wabi-sabi, which is my style, hands down. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to make a wabi-sabi Christmas quilt. There's going to be no rhyme nor reason. It's it's probably going to be more or less in um, strips and each strip will just be random. I'm going to do that and I'm not going to do a king size as I've been doing. I'm not going to do a queen size. I don't even think I'm gonna do a full size. I think I'm gonna do like a twin size, something to just cozy up on the sofa with while we're watching TV or whatever. That is my goal. Wish me luck. I have, I have, I had plans of starting another quilt, but I think I'm going to put that on hold and do the Christmas quilt since I have this beautiful fabric from my mother-in-law. It's going to be so special. And um, then maybe I'll have it done in time for Christmas since it's going to be small. I hope. But that was such fun going through that fabric with her. She is a very beautiful quilter. She's made gorgeous quilts. And um, so all of that fabric will be really special to me. I have, um, like I said, I've been doing some knitting. So let me show you what I have on and that will transfer us into what is out of my bags. I am wearing the Glad sweater wrap cardigan. I don't know what they call it. It is by Rowan and um, I, now I don't know if you can tell, but I did this, this was all from Stash. So I started with this lace weight and I ran out. So I had this other lace weight, this orange, that I thought it's close enough. It's the sleeves, so I don't think it really matters that they're just off, maybe just a hair of a shade. Um, but so I'm, I'm happy with it, it doesn't bother me and I am pleased with how it turned out. I will stand up and let you see a little bit more of how it, how I wear it. I'm loving it. So that is out of my bags and it feels so good to have something out of my bags. I think I started this, I don't know. I'm going to start writing the date of when I start patterns because they get put aside sometimes, a lot of times, and then I pick them back up and I don't remember. This has been quite a while. I started this and now it's finished. I love it. I think I'll wear it with a lot. I mean, I think this orange color goes with just about anything. I'm gonna wear it a lot this fall and being that I'm menopausal, I can now wear sleeveless and still have something on so that when the hot flashes stop and I'm freezing, that I will have some covering on my arms so that I'll be warm yet not too warm. And I am quite thrilled with it. So I have something out of my bag, something, something that was done from stash, something that has been buried in my bags it feels really, really good. Oh, it feels so good. So this is out of my bags. Now, that's all that I took out of my, that's all that I finished. Um, so that, this is what is the Glad Sweater by Rowan. And, oh, you know what else? Something else I'm wearing. Okay, can you see these beautiful earrings? My daughter made those for me. Well, she made them. She has a little shop. And so she made them and I'm like, oh, I want to buy those. And she said, you're, well, you're not buying them. So she gave them to me. I actually got to pick. And uh, this was the pair that I picked, but I love them. They're kind of like, I don't know, macrame or knotted or something. I don't know. But I am in love with them. I will pop her. I, I will pop her Instagram name down in the show notes in case you want to look at, ask her what other kind of jewelry she has if you're interested um, they're coming up this weekend, and I'm, there's another pair that she made that I absolutely love, and I think I'm going to ask her to bring those too. But I am so in love with those. So, yes, I have new earrings and a new sweater. Everything else is old. But out of my bags, then 
Let's move on to what's in my bags. I am really, really close to having something else out of my bags. It's in, the fr it's in a fringe supply bag. And I, I showed you last time, but it's my pattern, the Serendipity Socks. And that pattern is on Ravelry, but I'm making them for my husband for his birthday. And his birthday is this weekend. I have a little bit of work to do, but I can do it. I have this sock finished. Well, it's not finished. Okay. I have this sock finished to where I'm going to start the toe. And I don't know how far to knit the toe and then close it in. So I stopped and then I cast on this one and I have this one. I'm working on the heel flap now. Okay. I will have both of these socks knit to here. Then I'm going to wrap them up and gift them to him like that. And then once he opens them, I'll tell him, you know, I just need you to try them on so that I know how far to knit the toe before I start closing and you know, decreasing for the toe. Um, I could give it to him and have him try it on before, but then that would ruin the surprise. And he doesn't know about this. I mean, like he's, I'm sure he's seen me working on it, but he has no clue that they're for him. I probably lied to him and said they were for someone else, but I have these. So this is in my bags. It will be out of my bags by the next time we, we speak. And I will take some photos of him trying them on, um, after I've closed in the toe, of course. <laughs> But that is, this is just stash yarn that I had. I don't even know about this. Um, this is, um, let's see, I have a skein of it here. This is the Fable yarn that's been in my stash forever. And then random, the toes are going to be out of this. Oh, I always have to have a pair of socks on the go. I love knitting socks. They're just my grab and go, you know, when I'm traveling or when, when we're just going down the road, I always have a knitting project with me because you never know if you're going to get stuck in traffic or you're going to have to wait somewhere for something. So I always have a knitting project with me and nine times out of 10, it's going to be a pair of socks. I just find them mindless, so easy peasy to work on. So that is one project that's in my bags. I'm only going to show you one other project that's in my bags. I'm trying to work through my bags. I really have this itch to cast something new on. And I actually bought a kit that I'm going to show you in a little while when we get to my shopping bags. But I'm trying my best to work through projects that are in my bags before I cast something on. I don't know how long I'm going to be able to do it. But I'm giving it the best try I can. I've also been working on this blanket right here that's sitting on this little table. That's the blanket for my sister. I'm not even going to open it up because I've probably only gotten... I think like seven rows added to it. So not enough to unfold it and show you all that. In another one of my fringe supply bags, I am, I pulled this out. It is a bit along that I'm doing with a friend in Spain. And it is the Everyday Shawl by Andrea Mowry. And I don't know, I think I showed you this. I don't know how that's even going to come through, but... That is what I'm doing. And again, I'm using stash. And the stash is, it's Madeline Tosh. Um, and it's in farmhouse white. So it, it's more like a grayish off white. But I have the first chevron border. I think this is the front side. The first, the first end of it. This is the chevron border. Can you see that? Yeah, right there you can see it. Now I am to stockinette stitch forever. <sighs> thankfully, I purl backwards. No, thankfully I knit backwards. So when it comes to the purl rows, I don't have to do all that purling. I'm someone who doesn't really enjoy purling. I don't mind if it's knit one, purl one, or knit three, purl five. That's okay. Like. Like in these, this, I didn't do backwards knitting here. But on this next section, I will do backwards knitting. And I've been working at it long enough that I'm pretty efficient at it now. I, I'm i not any slower at backward knitting than I would be at purling. Um, at first, when you when you transfer from purling to backward knitting, it's there's a learning curve. So you kind of, you know, your fingers have to get in the groove and... Um, 
so it, it slows you down a little bit, but if you don't, do not like to knit, if you do not like to purl like long rows, I suggest you look up YouTube on knitting backwards and learning, teaching yourself because it saves so much on the fingers. I, um, maybe, maybe I can put a little, um, tutorial, either do a separate tutorial or add it to the end of this video of, of me backwards knitting. I will try to do that. I'm not promising. I may completely forget or I just may not be into it. <laughs> I may just decide I don't want to do it, but, um, Hopefully I will. Hopefully I can put it in, sneak it in the end here or just do a separate video on it. But that is the Everyday Shawl by Andrea Mallory. And I think it's going to be a really nice big wrap, which I love nice big wraps. So I think that will be a great, great shawl to have on hand. I used to have a shawl on the go, like I did socks. I mean, I, I would just went to this phase where I just loved knitting shawls because I love wearing shawls. However, it got to the point I had so many shawls. I wasn't wearing them all. So I began gifting them, giving them as gifts. And I just love doing that. So I think I have my, of course, I don't have what all the stuff is boxed up for winter. I know there's a lot, a ton of shawls in there, but I think at least it's manageable now. I think now the shawls that I have are shawls that I love wearing. So now I feel like I can start knitting shawls again. So that is the only active projects that I'm knitting in my bags right now. The socks for my husband, this everyday shawl, and then this blanket. That's all I'm trying to work on as far as knitting, crocheting, that kind of craft, okay? Oh, I'm gonna put this back in there or I will lose that pattern. I also have been doing, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna do really quickly, I'm gonna do shopping bags because it kind of ties in with knitting. I have looked at this shawl on Pearl Soho for so long and I cannot escape it. Every time I go on there to, to look at yarn and stuff, this pattern just like whacks me inside of the head. And so I finally gave in and I ordered the kit. This it, it's called um, the Striped Triangle Garter Wrap. And it, you know, it looks like it's another big wrap. Can you see that? Or is there a, the dome it, to the yurt is up there and it's really shining right now. Oh, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna take it out of this plastic. I think that will help. That helps a lot. Okay, so that is the shawl that I'm going to do with these colors, this kit. And I really, really, really want to get started. It's garter. It'll be so fast, so fun on big needles. It's a free pattern. So go online. There was another kit that had like orange in it that I really loved. It was so hard. Which do I buy? But I settled on this one and I think I'm going to be happy. But if it's going to be as fun to knit as I think it is, I may order that orange, orange, um, kit as well. That is always in my shopping bags. I've been a very good girl. I did shop some when we went to West Virginia. Um, when I say we, my mom went with me and she stayed up there and visited friends while I visited my friends. And uh, I did some shopping. We went to a soap making place and I bought some things there. But uh, for the most part, I haven't been doing a whole lot of shopping. Okay. So remember my, um, drop spinning. This is all I've done. I mean, is that pathetic or what? I decided, okay, on my way to Charlotte, I was talking to my friend from St. Louis and she was telling me that she put all of her drop spindles up for sale. No, her, um, what are they called? Um, these are drop spindles. Hers were like the, the, the spindles that set in like a little bowl support spindles. Okay. She has some beautiful support spindles. Her name on Instagram is Twisted Die Kitchen. I'm assuming they have not all sold, but if you are a support spindle person, or if you collect su support spindles, if you want to see some beautiful ones, go to Sherry's um, Instagram page, Twisted Die Kitchen, and you will see, and she's selling all of them because she's decided 
that um, she it's not her first love. It's not her second love. It's not even her third love anymore. And she's just clearing out the space in her brain and in her croft area. So when we were talking, I said, you know what? I really had fun at that class because I love, I, I, I enjoyed meeting the people. And I enjoyed just being in the, the, the yarn store vibe. But I took that class how many weeks ago? And I picked this drop spindle up, I think, two times. So it's really not, I think that tells me it's not something that I love doing. It, it's intriguing. I don't think I want to get any further into it because then I think that just constitutes spending more money. And I don't want to do that to something that I'm just half-hearted into. So I don't know that I'm going to continue this. Uh, one of my followers goes there and takes spin. She goes there and spins every Monday. And she has invited me to come spin with them. That would be fun because I would be with knitters. I would be with one, someone who watches my podcast. That would be fun. And maybe in that setting, I would enjoy, spin, I would enjoy spinning. But as far as sitting around the yurt and picking it up and spinning, not my thing. And I have a whole bunch of fiber that has been in my stash. So I'm really torn. I don't know what I'm going to be doing with all of that. And then again, who knows, one afternoon I might say, oh, I want to spin and just sit down and start spinning. It's, it's, do you have the same struggle of multi-crafting? I mean, do you, do you love it as much as I love it? I mean, like I love knitting. I love crochet. So those things I could say I love. I really love doing needlework, like cross-stitched embroidery. But again, I don't pick that up a lot. I love to paint. I love quilting when I'm doing it. But again, you know, that's just something, that's a bug that flies in, bites me, I do it, and then it flies off when it's finished. I don't know. So I'm not gonna get rid of my drop spindles just yet. I mean, I don't have money in mine at all. I mean, minimal. I'd probably keep the one that I bought in West Virginia that has a WV on it, and I, I might just, gift the other ones. I don't know. Stay tuned. We shall see. I picked up my cross stitch this week and I had such fun. So I have been doing this. I should have taken it out of this and I should have maybe pressed it off so it wouldn't be so um, wrinkled. I bought this kit from a friend of mine that I met in Norway. Um, Treehouse, Treehouse Fiber, is that what your name is, Rachel? Treehouse Fiber Arts, Treehouse Fiber. I don't know, Rachel, I am so sorry. I will put it in the show notes so that you can go visit her shop because if you like to cross stitch, she has, she has it all set up for you, so easy. But this is the kit that I'm doing. I had ordered from Rachel um, a while back. It says, I shall be miserable if I have not an excellent library, 1813. So, Mrs. Br Mrs. Bingley's library. Let me take it out of the little hoop so we can at least see it. I know it's going to be, it's going to be wrinkled, but you can at least see what I've done. So I've got the rooftop done and I'm starting, starting my way down. But I am enjoying that once again. I love the details of cross stitch, like the little cup in her hand, the books she's standing on, the, um, I don't know what that is. I guess that's the teacup, the teapot. I just love it. So I'm doing that. So I've picked that up a little bit in the evenings and been working on that some. The lighting has to be really good, I'm finding. And the glasses have definitely got to be on to do that. And with the kit, I got this little, I ordered it a while back, but this was one of the little bags. I think Rachel still has those in her shop. So I've been doing that. That is all the crofting I've been doing. Uh, like I say, I've been working on that African a lot at night. Um, and this, this took so long because you, you knit the, front, the right side, you knit the back, then you did the one side, then you did the other side, then you did the sleeves flat. 
and then you had to seam it all up and then you had to go in and pick up stitches all the way around and knit a few rows to put a nice edging to it. So it took me a while just to finish it once it was finished, you know, like to finish it like seaming it up. And I'm not, I don't like doing sweaters like that. I don't, I like, I don't mind knitting, uh, seaming in a sleeve, setting a sleeve in, but I don't like, I don't like knitting sweaters piece by piece. Not my thing. I know they say it gives a better fit. And I will say I love the fit of this sweater. So maybe there is something to that, that the structure of the sweater is better when you do it piece by piece. I've heard that. I'm not quite professional enough to, to analyze that pro thinking process. But I will say this is a great fit to the sweater. All right. Let's talk about our book bag. Remember the last time I was on here, I showed you the book To Shake the Sleeping Self by Jedediah Jenkins. You guys. Okay, we started a book club and we are having a discussion. discussion. We are having a discussion over on Instagram. It is, it, it has taken me a while to get these ladies talking. Let me tell you. I don't know if they just like to read a book together and just say, oh, good. But like I asked a question and there was no response. So I said, okay, maybe we don't like questions. Just give me your thoughts. And then I, then I started getting some feedback, but this book is so good. I am passing this one on to Marta um, with her box for uh, Advent because she couldn't get it on Audible over in the UK. So I will be passing this on to her but it is a good book that you will want in your library. I thought since she was a biker, her and her husband are bikers, they would like this book. He gets you to thinking and he makes you um, really proud that you think outside the box sometimes. Because so many times I just keep my thoughts to myself because I think, you know, well, that's really not the norm or that's not how I was raised or what, would, you know, what people think. And he kind of just gives you the liberty, like it's okay to, to think differently. Um, is so, 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 so good. And it's not offensive. I mean, he is not, uh, if he would have a different point of view than you, you would not be offended by it at all. It's really, really a really good book. Then I um, listened to The Diamond Eye by Kate Quinn. You have to read that or listen to it. It is a good book. It is about a Russian sharpshooter during when Germany is invading Russia in World War II. And it's so good. It's, she's a female. The protagonist is a female. And it's good. I mean, I could not stop listening to it. So I was really sad when these two books have come to an end. Um, I picked up this book from my books to be read, The Accidental Book Club. So I've had it for a while. I'm going to start that this afternoon if it starts to rain. Uh, I love, love, love a rainy afternoon, all curled up in bed with a hot cup of tea and a book. Oh, there's nothing like that. So that's what I plan to do if it would rain. And it is now mm, quarter till four. It hasn't rained yet. So my, my cuddly book club day might not happen. But I do want to start this maybe tonight when I go to bed. And then I have next month's book club book already picked out, but I'm not going to tell you what that is just yet. Maybe the next, definitely the next podcast, I will tell you about it. I saw it on Barnes and Noble. It's not as serious a read. It's not as the thought provoking as a read. I don't think I haven't read it yet, but it just looked, it looked like a good read. So that's all I have. I've talked about what's in my bags, what's out of my bags, my shopping bags, my book bag. Remember this, um, this deck of cards by Kate Davies that I told you about. This was my card for today. Isn't it beautiful? And the back, the little, uh, the little inspiration on the back is set. It says, be astonished. So live your day being astonished. It's out there. There's plenty to be astonished over. You just have to look for it and you have to be mindful of it. I don't think I have anything else to share with you. That was a quick one, but that's good. Quick is good sometimes. Sometimes we don't have time for a big, long, raving, ranting podcast. 
I don't have anything coming up. Well, I kind of do. It's my husband's birthday. And then it's also our oldest daughter's birthday, but her and her family are going to the beach. So I won't get to see them on her birthday, but our youngest daughter and her husband and their three boys are coming up for the weekend. It's a holiday weekend here in the U.S., so it's a long weekend, and we're going to have fun with those boys. I plan to take them on hiking trails because they like to hike. The, the, the three-year-old and the eight-year-old like to take the trails and hike. Um, but I'm going to take them to the stream and let them play in the stream. And I'm going to take my daughter to a coffee shop. And we're going to just have a nice, fun weekend. I will be doing the cooking since it's Todd's birthday, um, I'm going to make pot of chili. I do it every birthday. I, I'm at the mindset you don't eat soup in the summer. So he loves my chili, but he can only get it from September to like April. And then as he jokes, it's against the law. You cannot eat chili from April till September. So he always looks forward to to that first pot of chili and sit on his birthday. So I'm going to be making a pot of chili. I'm going to make homemade bread and I'm making him a dessert. I've never made it before, but it's something he saw and said he wanted. So I'm going to make him that. And um, that is all I have planned. I'm trying to think past the birthdays. If there's anything, I'll probably go to Charlotte and celebrate my daughter when she gets back from the beach but other than that, I don't have a lot going on, but fall is creeping in. So I will be outside a lot, enjoying all the crisp air. I'm going to start, I am burning this candle right here. It's um, a eucalyptus, pep, eucalyptus spearmint blend, but that is the last. I'm After this, it's all fall candles for me. And my favorite fall candle, is Leaves by Bath and Body Works. It's so, so, so good. It carries me into Thanksgiving, even Christmas. It's just such a great smelling candle. So if you haven't smelled it, go check out Leaves at Bath and Body Works. I'm fortunate enough to have like an outlet with an hour's drive. So I stocked up on one of my trips to Charlotte, but I burn a lot of candles, so I will probably be swinging by there again soon to get some more of the leaves because I love them. Love, love, love. I'm also in my diffusers. I'm burning. Um, oh, not burning, but I'm the oil that I'm using is um, orange spice. I've already started that. So on the day I'm not burning this candle, I've got my diffusers going with orange spice. So that gives a fall scent. So I've already started that. I'm ready. I am so ready. I'm even wearing orange. How much more ready can you get than that? But I tell you what, when I record, I have to turn off the fans and the air conditioner. And I don't know if you can tell, but I am sweating. So I need to get off of here so I can turn all that back on and get the air circulating in here. So I'm not roasting. Oh, I hope that you are all well, that you're crofting and you're happy. I wanted to tell you, there were a few things I wanted to tell you. I wanted to tell you about Sherry's um, support spindles to go check those out. Um, seemed like there was someone else I was talking to and I wanted to promote something that they were doing. And I'm probably not going to remember it because I should make show notes. That would be, that would be smart, huh? But I will tell you this, you can support me by buying me a coffee. The link is in my show notes. Um, that just helps keep me encouraged knowing that people are out there, that they are appreciating what work I'm doing, the, the, the work of setting up and documenting my life. And um, so if you want to buy me a coffee, you can hop over there to buy me a coffee. I greatly appreciate that. And I think on my patterns, I do have some sock patterns on Ravelry, the Serendipity sock, which is what I'm making my husband, and then the little shorty sock, Heart of, Hearts of Foot. That's also on Ravelry if you want to check those two patterns out. My Etsy shop is still not up and going. I, I don't know. I don't know. Not enough time in the day to do it all. I need to get started back to do, make it though. That I enjoy it. Once I get started, I absolutely love it, but it's all packed up and put away. And I just need to drag it out and get going again. But yeah, 
So ho just hopefully that'll be up and going soon. Now that it's fall, people like to wear that, that crochet stuff. So I need to get going on that. But yeah, that's all. And so I hope that you are well and just remember that in all you do, take it one stitch at a time. Hey, you gonna smile or you gonna boss? Say hi, baby. Hi, Biko. Gigi, 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 gigi. Gigi, 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 gigi. You big boy.